Treating an alkyl halide with base is a very common way to make alkenes. Check this out. Secondary butyl bromide gives a decent yield of a pair of alkenes. There's the trans 2-butene and the cis 2-butene. And as I've noted here, we get significantly more of the trans than the cis. Why is that? Well, it's because the trans is more stable. And that is generally true about alkenes. The cis is significantly less stable than the trans. So why is that? Well, there's an explanation that's easy to understand. I have rewritten the structure of 2-butene to show the two methyl groups, including the hydrogens bonded to each carbon. I've done this so we can show the space that these two methyl groups would like to occupy, roughly indicated by the circles. Those circles actually overlap. The methyl groups are crowded, they'd like to occupy the same space, and that increases the energy. It's something we call van der Waals strain. It's a steric effect, spatial crowding, and it raises the energy of this molecule. Now take a look at the trans 2-butene. I'll put the circles around those methyl groups, and it's crystal clear there's no van der Waals strain. It's easy to understand that trans is more stable than cis and why. It's a steric thing. Crowding in the cis, no crowding in the trans. Let's go back to that reaction I showed you at the beginning and take an even closer look. When we look through the reaction mixture carefully, in addition to seeing the major product, 2-butene, we see a minor amount of 1-butene. Together, the cis and trans 2-butenes account for most of the product, but there is a significant amount of the minor product, 1-butene. My question is, why is 2-butene favored? Well, what's the difference? 2-butene has two alkyl groups attached to the double bond. 1-butene has one alkyl group attached to the double bond, and that's the difference. Replacing hydrogens by alkyl groups makes alkenes more stable. So it's a general rule. More alkyl groups on the double bond means the alkene is more stable. But, okay, why? To understand this, we have to look closely at the orbitals that are used for bonding. The alkene carbons are sp2 hybridized, so the sigma bonds that they form use sp2 hybridized orbitals. To form a bond to a hydrogen or carbon, that alkene will use an orbital shaped more or less like the one I show in blue here. That orbital is closer to the nucleus than an sp3 orbital because it has more s character. And therefore, because it's closer to positive charge, the orbital is more electronegative. It has a greater demand for electron density. Now take a look at the bonding involving that sp2 orbital. When a hydrogen bonds to an alkene, it uses a 1s orbital. Because that orbital is very close to the nucleus, that's at that lowest energy level, that spherical orbital is not polarizable. It doesn't distort its shape to accomplish bonding. So when it bonds to an alkene, here's what we get. We get the hydrogen with its spherical orbital overlapping with the sp2 orbital of the alkene carbon. Okay, that's fine. We've made a sigma bond. But now look what happens when we replace that hydrogen with a carbon. Here's a typical sp3 orbital of an alkyl group. It's at the second energy level, so it's larger, further from the nucleus, than that 1s orbital, and it's more polarizable. The electron density in that sp3 orbital is capable of being distorted, being drawn in the direction of electron demand. Well, remember I said sp2 orbitals are more electronegative and have greater electron demand? Look what happens when a carbon bonds to an alkene. Instead of that simple overlap like we see with the hydrogen to form the carbon-hydrogen bond, we see overlap between the sp3 orbital, which is distorted in shape, drawn more to the electronegative sp2 orbital. This increases the overlap and shifts electron density toward the carbon. Take a look at the sp3 orbital we started with, shown in green, and you see that the blue one used for bonding is significantly distorted toward the carbon atom, overlapping the sp2 orbital. That results in an electron shift toward the carbon, toward that more electronegative sp2 orbital, 
satisfying some of its demand for extra electron density. So, alkyl groups stabilize alkenes relative to hydrogen because the orbital they use is polarizable, overlaps well with the sp2 orbital, and helps satisfy the extra electron demand of an sp2 orbital. These two factors about alkene stabilities, the fact that trans is more stable than cis, and that alkyl groups in place of hydrogen stabilize alkenes, direct the outcome of reactions that form alkenes. We'll run into both of these effects as we talk about chemistry that makes carbon-carbon double bonds.